Over the weekend, an incredibly mediocre British musician by the name of Sam Smith attempted to generate controversy by dancing in satanic garb while performing at the Grammy Awards. Smith, who's declared himself non-binary, sang a song named Unholy along with trans performer Kim Petrus, while dancers in satanic horns, leather lingerie, and whips surrounded the duo on stage. If you were unaware that the Grammys were broadcast, or even that they still existed, you're in good company. No one cares about these self-congratulatory media spectacles anymore, and Smith's performance was obviously designed as a desperate bid for relevance. In the past, transgression had been an easy way to generate outrage and gain attention for America's degenerate cultural elites, but the only remarkable thing about Smith's antics were how lazy, safe, and banal they really were. The left is a coalition of those who stand to gain from the deconstruction of Western civilization, and Christianity is one of their favorite targets. Progressives generate political power by deconstructing the nation's heritage, its families, and its values, but they seem most gleeful when they get the opportunity to attack its dominant religion. Rather than build something of substance by venerating the good, beautiful, and true, the vast majority of leftist art and culture for many decades has been built entirely on subversion. At first, these television shows, movies, and songs had something interesting to say. There were, of course, many instances of hypocrisy and different contradictions that early works of this type could examine. But when a cultural movement's only trick is the deconstruction of the culture that came before it, that movement is living on borrowed time. Smith's performance would love to recreate the shocked indignation of old, the kind of scandal that used to cause outraged parents to rail against the sexually charged performances of Madonna, or the type that inspired Tipper Gore to lead a campaign of censorship targeting bands like Motley Crue or Twisted Sister. But those days are far in the rearview mirror. Hollywood, the music industry, academia, and every other major cultural force in America have done nothing but challenge, deconstruct, and transgress these boundaries, while building nothing of their own, and frankly, it's become a bloodless and depressing affair. Madonna herself may have been the poster child for how sad and empty the revolution has become. The aging pop star, who made a name for herself with highly sexualized videos that mocked religion, made a presentation at the award show honoring those who had picked up her torch of rebellion. The real question is, rebellion against what? Every single cause Madonna has championed has now been accepted by corporate America. Every attitude about sexuality or religion has been adopted by the public school system. Madonna's face is almost unrecognizable, a weird collection of plastic surgery procedures undergone in an attempt to stay young and relevant have left her face looking like a character. A musician who once relied on youth, beauty, and subversion now desperately tries to stay relevant and edgy by pushing a revolution that became mainstream and boring many decades ago, a perfect reflection of the pop culture complex in its entirety. Far from challenging power or established cultural norms, Smith's cartoonish Satanism and LGBTQ politics embrace the mainstream narrative pushed by every major institution in the United States. The singer has the exact same politics and cultural beliefs espoused by Citibank, Google, Goldman Sachs, and Walmart. There was never any real danger or consequences, any chance of cancellation. It was the safest performance imaginable. If Smith were really interested in causing controversy, he would have mocked Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, or any of the other religions. But he chose Christianity because he understood that's the one target for which he was going to receive zero real pushback. It would have been equally tasteless, but at least it would have shown willingness to challenge the popular narrative. If Smith were really interested in challenging established power, he could have questioned the trans movement, abortion, or the corporate leviathan that seems so obsessed with destroying the American family. But he's a coward masquerading as a rebel, so he simply parrots the positions of the powerful. After the pop star's performance, an advertisement aired proudly proclaiming that this celebration of satanic imagery has been brought to the viewer by Pfizer the same pharmaceutical giant responsible for the dubious COVID-19 vaccine. Good to know that the Lord still has a sense of humor. Progressivism is a cultural vampire, feeding on the bones of a once great Christian civilization, but as it cleans the last bit of marrow out of those bones, it becomes desperate. How do you keep a coalition together that was organized around the deconstruction of a traditional American culture once you've consumed that culture in its entirety? 
The hedonism and social atomization the left offers do little to create a new and dynamic cultural force. There is no substance on which progressives can create a foundation. If your cultural movement is built entirely on deconstruction, once you've exhausted the energy generated by outrage, the only thing left to do is make the deconstruction of the ritual a ritual unto itself. Progressives have created sacraments for themselves like transition, abortion, and coming out, but these rituals lose all their animating energy when the forces they were aimed at no longer hold cultural sway. The left can parade around the Handmaid's Tale or any of the other delusional boogeymen of Christianity it would like, but it's becoming increasingly difficult for anyone to pretend these straw men pose any real threat to progressive hegemony. While the left is committed to all kinds of horrible atrocities, it may be that the response progressives fear the most to their tired and stale brand of corporate rebellion is a bored yawn. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click like. If you haven't subscribed, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to listen to these shows as podcasts, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the Oren McIntyre podcast on any of the major podcast platforms. And when you do, if you leave a review or a rating, that really helps. Really appreciate it. If you'd like to subscribe to my Substack, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Gab, if you'd like to watch this on Rumble or Odyssey, all the links for that are down below the description of the video. Thanks for coming, guys. And as always, I'll talk to you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.